So I've factory reset this LG C1 OLED and I'm going to start up my Xbox Series X, one of them, to show you exactly what to do to achieve the best settings from scratch as if you know you're doing it with a new LG C1 when you unbox it. If we press OK, the first thing that you need to do is to turn off the energy saving setting. Now this setting has moved location since a few firmware updates ago so to access it, we need to long press the cogwheel button on the remote control to pull up the picture menu and then we need to go into support and then go into OLED care, go into device self care and this is the new location for the energy saving setting and we need to turn energy saving step to off. Now by advising people to do this, some commenter has accused me of not being green minded that I don't really take care of the environment and that is not true at all because you know recently I've started flushing the toilet only every other time I go for a wee but the reason why we turn off energy saving step is because you know by enabling the setting it will mess with the light output of the television so for example in SDR the gamma will be skewed especially at the top end again this depends on the ambient lighting that is detected by the light sensor on the TV but especially in HDR, turning on energy saving step will lower the peak brightness of the TV and darken the whole HDR image, preventing you from getting the best picture quality. So for the highest picture accuracy, we always turn off energy saving step and I don't think that this is disputable. So after doing this, the next thing that we need to do is to engage PC mode. Now to do this, what we will need to do is to press the source button on your remote control and then click on home dashboard and then wait a bit because webOS 6.0 is slower than the previous webOS system and click on this three dot button, click on edit and edit inputs and whichever input you have connected the Xbox Series X to, you need to click on the icon and then change it to PC. This will have a couple of benefits. The first benefit is that this allows for full 444 chroma and I have two LG C1 here but unfortunately only a 48 inch version and a 55 inch version. Unfortunately I couldn't get the same screen size for both. Sometimes in life you just have to make do with whatever size you have. But what I'm going to show you now is PC mode on one set and game console mode on the other. And you can see here that the PC mode will allow for 444 Chroma according to our own custom order test pattern, whereas the game console icon will only allow for 422 Chroma. And there is another benefit to engaging PC mode as well. Especially for HDR10 games, I found that engaging PC mode will achieve a smoother gradation than outside of PC mode, as you can see in this character selection screen from Outriders on both TVs which hopefully will be clear to you despite the size difference of these individual units that I have in my test room here. After engaging PC mode, what we'll do is to go into the picture setting. Again, long press the cogwheel button and then it is correctly set to game optimizer mode to achieve the lowest input lag already because the Xbox Series X and also the LG C1 both support ALRM or auto low latency mode. And what we need to do is to go into advanced settings and first go into the brightness submenu. OLED pixel brightness will affect the light output from the LG C1 television. Now bear in mind that in game mode, the light output is slightly different from filmmaker mode. Whatever value you use, it will be different in terms of the actual light output between filmmaker mode and game mode. So for game mode, I've done a bunch of measurements and if you leave, say, contrast at 85 and OLED pixel brightness of 100 will give you around 200 nits and if you want to achieve a more comfortable light output level for your viewing environment around 85 is 170 nits and 75 is around 150 nits and then 55 is around 120 nits and if you really want to go for 100 nits, then you will have to go down to 45. And strictly speaking, for sRGB, 
you may be wanting to target 80 nits, which will take you to around, say, 35, but I think that is too dim for most people. I've put a table here, so you can just choose whichever light level that is suitable for your own needs and for your viewing environment. But contrast, we will leave it at 85. In fact, I'll go back up to a light level of say 55 which is around 120 nits and then with screen brightness we'll leave it at 50 and then with gamma we will leave it on 2.2 to approximate srgb now normally i would advise people to go for bt1886 which is essentially 2.4 on oled but the 2021 lg oleds including the lg c1 they crush a lot of dark detail out of the box and this is by design by LG to hide the near black chrominance overshoot. So I think 2.2 gamma will be a good middle ground to get enough shadow detail while not losing too much of the image depth while also adhering to the sRGB standard for game mastering. And with black level, normally I would advise people to just go for limited to force it to a limited level. But I think the LG C1 does quite well with auto and especially if you are sharing the same HDMI port with other devices such as the PS5. I haven't encountered any situation where leaving black level to auto will create issues with the Xbox Series X, assuming you set up the Xbox Series X correctly, of course. And with motion eye care, we'll leave it off. And then next, we'll go into the color submenu. With color depth on my particular unit, again, bearing in mind that the color accuracy in game mode in terms of the settings is different from other non-game modes such as filmmaker mode or ISF bright mode so this is SDR and from my measurements 55 is more accurate than 50 so I'll leave it on 55 leave all this as normal go into white balance and then we'll turn color temperature all the way down to warm 50 which will be closest to the D65 white point and then we'll get out from here and under clarity, we'll turn sharpness all the way down to zero to make sure there's absolutely no edge enhancement, regardless of whether you're doing 4K or sub 4K resolution. And you can notice here that all these are grayed out. So what I'm going to do is to go into the game optimizer menu. If you press the cogwheel button just once and then click on game optimizer, this will bring you to the game optimizer menu and game genre standard is the most accurate with black stabilizer and white stabilizer both at 10 and then i would prefer to set prevent input delay input lag to boost first of all this will achieve a slightly lower input lag for 60 frames per second input signal but also it will actually brighten the near black gamma slightly and this will counteract the over darkened near black gamma that lg has programmed onto their 2021 oleds including the lg c1 so it is a good compromise if you don't really have any tools to calibrate your near black gamma and I would leave VRR and G-Sync on. And with AMD FreeSync Premium, I would turn it on as well because, you know, since a recent firmware update, AMD FreeSync Premium and Dolby Vision on the LG C1 are no longer mutually exclusive. And with the fine-tuned dark area setting, you can use a game and see whether you are seeing excessively brightened near black gamma because of VRR and turn it down as appropriate. Next, we are going to tackle HDR and what we're going to do is to first of all disable Dolby Vision for gaming and I've already disabled it and if we just fire up an HDR game, let's take for example Dirt 5 or maybe Forza Horizon 5, right? So if you just fire up an HDR game and then I will show you the settings that are necessary so you can see all right i will turn the volume down so once you start an hdr game if you long press the cockwheel button on your remote control again you can see that this is the factory default game optimizer mode again it is not ideal it is far too blue so what we're going to do is to go into first of all the brightness sub menu and we need to change HDR tool mapping to HDIG and this will provide the most accurate tool mapping that hard clips 
so that the tone mapping can be performed by the game console itself. And then we'll leave all this as default. And then under color, we'll again leave color depth at 55 because according to my measurements on my particular unit, even for HDR game mode, 55 is more accurate than 50. And if we go into color temperature, we will just drag it all the way down to warm 50 to approximate D65, which is the white point that is used within the film and broadcast and increasingly gaming industry. And after that, we will go into the clarity submenu and we will turn sharpness all the way down to zero. And this will provide the best setting on your LG C1 for playing HDR game. And besides that, you will also need to go into your Xbox Series X once you actually have set your HDR tone mapping to HGIG. You will need to go into your Xbox Series X and adjust the... I'll get out from this menu. We'll go into settings and we will do the HDR calibration. And this is essentially your HGIG calibration. So for the first one, I will always go all the way to zero all the way left and then for the second one you just go all the way left and then you go up by one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten clicks and then for the third one again you go all the way left and then you go up by one two three four five six seven eight nine ten clicks and this will give you 800 nits of maximum tomat luminance and maximum full frame tomat luminance and if you press done this will allow you to take advantage of the HIAG capabilities of the LG C1 and also the Xbox Series X to let an appropriate gain tone map without letting the TV doing double tone mapping, so to speak. With that out of the way, what I'm going to do is to talk about how to set up Dolby Vision. This video is sponsored by Box, the online technology store. Visit box.co.uk for the best deals on TVs, soundbars and all your other technology needs. To set up Dolby Vision, we first of all need to go into Dolby Vision for gaming. Click on yes. And then what I'll do is I will quit the game and then start the game again. And this will bring us into the Dolby Vision game optimizer mode, hopefully. You can see Dolby Vision has popped up. And if we long press the cogwheel button, again, you can see it defaults to game optimized mode because of ALRM. Go into advanced settings, under brightness, I think, you know, everything is correct. And then under color, again, white balance, it is correctly set by default to warm 50. And with clarity, all you need to do is to turn sharpness all the way down to zero to ensure there's absolutely no edge enhancement. And after doing this, you need to make sure that your Xbox Series X is set correctly as well. So what I'm going to do is to just go back to the settings screen on the Xbox Series X and then go into TV and display options. And under video mode, what is important is that you need to know when to enable Dolby Vision for gaming and when not to enable Dolby Vision for gaming. Unfortunately, I don't really have time to test all the games out there, but some games look better in Dolby Vision, some games look better in HDR10. And for games that look better in Dolby Vision, just keep this checked. And for games that look better in HDR10, just uncheck Dolby Vision for gaming. And you also need to make sure that your video fidelity and overscan settings are correct. I've done another video explaining how to do it here.